Hello again, fellow teachers and educators from around the globe, bilingual teachers and colleagues. Welcome to this video of our series on the TKT Clear Test, on passing the TKT Clear Test. So this video is like the previous ones. We're getting different tasks, different questions from a sample TKT Clear Test, answering the questions here, talking about them, and before even answering the questions, we are looking at what area of bilingual teaching or of TKT Clio that the question or the task is focusing on, right? So this, the goal here is to help us develop the skills and develop the thinking strategies that we need to take the test and succeed in it. So if you're wondering which test we're using, this is the one you can see on the screen. Um, there is a link to this test in the comment section of this video down below. And while you're there, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like the video to give us some uh, type of boost so other people can also find it when they look for it. So without much further ado, let's get started. We're tackling task 12 now. Again, if you don't remember, a task is a group of questions. There's five questions under this task. And there is a one in parentheses because this is the first task of the last section of the test. There's four sections in the TKT Clear test. We're going to talk a little bit about this one in a minute. But let's go over the question itself now so that we understand what it is about. For question 71 to 75, match the assessment strategies, sorry, the assessment activities with the types of assessment listed A through F. Mark the correct letter A through F on your answer sheet there is one extra option which you do not need to use. So we're not going to use all the letters. We're going to use all but one. Um, and the types of assessment we have here is the teacher is assessing the learner's language skills. The teacher is assessing the learner's understanding of content. Each learner is self-assessing his or her own language skills. Each learner is self-assessing his or her own understanding of content. Learners are assessing each other's language skills. Learners are assessing each other's understanding of content. And the activities that we have, the learners are looking through their notebooks and answering questions to find out what they know and don't know about population growth. The learners have written sentences using comparative forms, which the teacher is now marking. 73, learners are conducting interviews about what they did last week and making a note of their partner's use of sequencing words. 74. Each learner is rereading a biography they have written for homework before handing it in to the teacher. They're checking whether it is well paragraphed and has a clear introduction and conclusion. 75. The learners have written some quiz questions about historical events they studied this term and they're now taking, sorry, talking in groups, asking each other their questions. All right, so let's unwrap this question and understand things little by little and, and slowly. So the area of teaching knowledge that this question focuses on is definitely assessment because there's assessment written all over the place. In this particular case, the question not only addresses what is being assessed, if it's content and if it's language, and also the type of assessment. Less so the type of assessment, because we're not talking about the traditional types here. But we're talking about the types of assessment uh, strategies that the teacher can use in the classroom. And notice that in this last section of the test, assessment, there are two tasks, 10 questions. So no wonder this first task has five questions, because the other one will contain the other five. And they're all matching and multiple choice questions, like the rest of the TKT Clio test. So first of all, just to get us on board or on the same page in terms of assessment, when we talk about assessment in general, especially for the TKT Clear test, uh, they can talk about, they can include three types of assessments in the test. The first one is formative assessment, which is what we call assessment for learning. So that, that means that the assessment goes on as learning goes on. If there is learning, there is assessment. It's not at the beginning, it's not at the end, it's as learning happens. Um, and that's very important because it's ongoing assessment. So how it can be done? Well, um, how can it be done? Teachers or peers, observations, presentations, 
evidence collection. So anything that the students do can be assessed because they're leaving a record of something that they have accomplished. So the teacher can analyze that information and assess it. Why is formative assessment important? Well, because it provides feedback on learning progression and informs the next step. So if I'm assessing as I go, then I know how quickly I should move on or not, or whether I should move on or not. And the, this type of assessment also feeds into motivation, because if I know my students are not doing well and they're not really accomplishing a task well, if I move on, they're not going to be as motivated because they're going to be failing too much. So I can stay on the stage that I'm working on right now and give them some more skills so that they can succeed so that they're going to be more motivated for the next steps. So what are some examples of formative assessment? Well, we have performance assessment, exit tickets, and we're going to talk about that in a later video, which is a little ticket you give them where they have to summarize what they've learned or do a sample of something that you've taught them how to do. Portfolios are also formative assessment types. And uh, some scholars today, um, they have collected evidence that they believe suggests that this is the most important type of assessment in a classroom. Um, we're going to talk about that later on, but anyways. So we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum, which is summative assessment. What is summative assessment? Well, it's assessment of learning. Usually it happens at the end of a lesson or end of a term. This is the final test, the final exam that includes everything. This is the very traditional type of assessment that most of us educators um, had to deal with when we were students ourselves. Um, who assesses? Well, the teacher can assess it, or sometimes an external examiner, like a Cambridge exam, is a summative assessment. Um, this exam that we're doing, the TKT Clio test, can be seen as, as a summative assessment, because if you took a course on TKT Clio, you may take this exam as your final assessment to see if you really mastered, um, have mastered the, the tenets of the course. And the examples are diagnostic tests, standardized tests. If it's a diagnostic test, it can be given at the beginning as well, because it could be seen as a way to see if how you're doing in relation to what you've learned previously and where you should begin in this next step, next cycle, which is a longer step. And in the middle, we have self-assessment, which is a reflection about learning. And it's as important as the other two and I would say as important as formative assessment is. It's also ongoing, and usually it can happen in many ways, but can-do statements are a very traditional way to do that. The student states what they can or what they cannot do, so that's very tied to learning objectives. And it allows students to gauge where they're at in terms of the learning outcomes. So the students are able to assess where they are for themselves which is important. It's not just the teacher telling them where they are. It's them recognizing where they are in the learning process. How can students do that? Well, they can write statements stating what they can do or not. They can write short paragraphs or they complete sentences that reflect what they can do. And more important than that, they can show things that they can do. That's even more important than any of that. So another important element for this question is who is assessing? Is the teacher assessing the learners? Are learners assessing themselves or are learners assessing each other? That's a key component to help us succeed in answering this question. And last but not least, important for this question is also the element of what is being assessed. So we need to think as we read the question and ask ourselves, uh, what is being assessed here? Is it content or language? That's key to understanding this question. So let's talk about some of the types of assessment so that we can see that assessment goes way beyond um, the summative types, right? And those are examples here, more examples of formative and self-assessment types so that we can illustrate a little bit. And that's been taken from, from Kay, Kay Bentley's book, which we always recommend. So we have a learning outcome in geography, for example, to understand the physical and human features of a mountain environment. So, what are some of the assessment criteria? Well, um, the student can show if they can use various sources to gather information, if they can identify physical features, they can identify human features, can organize information effectively. So, I can 
get the assessment criteria. And from this criteria, I can make formative assessments, I can make summative assessments, I can make self-assessment. So that's uh, what I'm going to be using as a teacher to build my assessment instruments. In art, to know how to record, observe, and explain work. So students can record um, work using various techniques, drawing, taking photographs, can observe things in nature, can explain what the drawing shows and make links to other work. And in economics, to know what products have a limited life for the consumer and the producer. So students can be asked to describe a product life cycle, can give examples of products with different lifespans, can draw a diagram to represent a product cycle. Again, different ways that assessment can be done and different focus uh, or foci, if you prefer, of assessment. So let's gear up to answer this question. Um, we've noticed here that the task is to match activity to types of assessment. So the strategy is, well, first of all, analyze the activities and determine who is assessing, what is being assessed, and how is it being assessed. Is it assessment or self-assessment? And that's basically it. So let's go over and try to answer these questions here. Um, the learners are, oh, first of all, the types of assessment. Again, the teacher is assessing the learner's language skills. The teacher is assessing the learner's understanding of content. Each learner is self-assessing his or her own language skills and self-assessing his or her own understanding of content. And learners are assessing each other's language skills or assessing each other's understanding of content. Again, the learners are looking through their notebooks and answering questions to find out what they know and what they don't know about population growth. Again, who's assessing learners? Are they assessing themselves or each other? Assessing themselves because they're looking through their own notebooks and answering questions to find out what they know, what they don't know. About what? Language or content? Population growth. Well, that happens to be content. So, of course, here, learners are self-assessing their own understanding of content because we know that the learners are assessing themselves and its content. Okay, I hope you've seen the connections. Let's do another one to illustrate. The learners have written sentences using comparative form forms, which the teacher is now marking. Teacher is assessing learners, so it could be A and B. Well, is the content, well, sorry, is what's being assessed content or language? Comparative forms, language, A, the teacher is assessing the learner's language skills. Have you seen how straightforward this is? Let's move on. Learners are conducting interviews about what they did last week and making a note of their partner's use of sequencing words. Learning Learners interviewing partners, students assessing each other. Okay, so it could be E or F. Now let's see here if it's content or language. Um, they're conducting interviews about what they did last week and making a note of their partner's use of sequencing words language. So that will be E. Learners are assessing each other's language skills. 74. Each learner is rereading a biography they have written for homework before handing it in to the teacher. So learners have written their own biographies. They're checking whether it is well paragraphed and has a clear introduction and conclusion. They are not reading each other's biography, they're reading their own biography, so we have a type of self-assessment here. And they're checking whether it's well paragraphed and has a clear introduction or conclusion. So it's learner self-assessment and they're assessing language skills because we're talking about paragraphs and language involved in writing, right, or strategies for writing. 75. The learners have written some quiz questions about historical events. They studied this term and are now talking in groups, talking to each other, asking each other their questions. So, assessing each other. It could be E or F. Well, we already used F and F is about, sorry, we already used E, which is about language skills. So, this is probably F. Let's check if it's content. Again, questions about historical events, not about a language focus. Or language content. So that's definitely F, 75 letter F. Again, 
First, we determine who's assessing who, and then we determine whether it's content, whether it's language. And some resources that I always recommend, Kay Bentley's book cited in this video, and the free handbook for teachers by Cambridge that lists everything you need to know um, for the TKT Clio test. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like it, to give us a boost and show the video to other people. And check out the recommendations that we left in the end of this video for you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.